filtered through that street folk idea, right? And it's a celebration of those people. And that's who I'm trying to, you know, again, help connect with this world of folklore and show that, hey, right, you know, you are doing amazing things. You're, you're artists, you're creatives, and you need to be, and you have traditions and you need to be celebrated as such. So that's what street folk is. That's what I'm trying to do. You know, man, there's just so many things that <laughs> I, I could ask from that. Uh, yeah. One question, this is something I, I, I've been, it's been wrapped around my brain for some time in one way or another. It's evolved to where I can actually make a direct statement about it at this time. Because yeah. growing up in hip hop, yeah. right? You you understand, you know this for a fact as well. This is a subculture, mm -hmm. uh, as we discussed before, that traveled with underworld dealings yeah. and traveled from city to city in many ways. Mm -hmm. And then eventually this subculture becomes uh, commercially viable. And now it is like the... The economy, it's its what I call the modern day cotton. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, that's real. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I feel that. Yeah. With that being said, have you noticed in, in your field work when you're talking to the brothers and sisters on the street that at some point, something that was just a folk, a small folk group, uh, interaction and engagement its popularity grew and blew so much that they they kind of want to wipe their hands from it because the 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 soul's been ripped out have have, have you come across this oh boy that's 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 an yeah i yes absolutely you know at the same time it's hard to remove yourself from something that is that's so much defines the last 25 years of our existence. I mean, I think I, I constantly hear criticisms about, you know, where hip hop is today, you know, what it's become, right? Who has their hands in it? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, you, you've probably been hearing that since been hearing that since the nineties, right? I mean, that's always sure. been a criticism, especially when it moved to the West coast and, you know, all that. Right. Um, but I think there is something so fundamental. I think hip hop represents at its core, represents something that's so fundamental to black people in the post civil rights era that we'll just, we won't ever be able to remove ourselves from it. I mean, hip hop is, it's a musical form, but it emerges out of how we interact with each other on a very basic level. The way we talk to each other, the way we spar with each other, right? The way we love each other, right? I mean, that's where hip hop emerges from and that continues to be true, right? So despite the criticism, I will also say that it's mostly old heads that I hear those criticisms from. And I say, and that old head, that changes with generation because I'm one now, you know what I'm saying? Right, 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 so right. That's all I'm saying, you know? Um, but I think it's, despite those criticisms, you know, hip hop at its core is black folk life. And that's how I try to position it, right? I mean, yeah, a Jay-Z can sell a million records, a billion records, it can be a billionaire, right? But what he's actually doing is a form of black folk culture. And you can't deny that. Even when a white person does it, right, they are borrowing from black folk culture. And I think we need to continue to highlight that point and celebrate that point, you know? And so, so yeah, yeah. That's a complicated way of answering your question. But yeah, no, no, I've heard, not, I have heard that. That's not complicated at all. <laughs> Actually, that, that makes a lot of sense. And it also, it, I'll, I'll begin to wrap up because I know you're busy, but it, no, it also leads to this. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I was, again, thinking about this for a couple of reasons. I was recently on the PFP, uh, Philadelphia yeah. Folk Project, um, panel well i moderated the panel on on appropriation right yeah and i had to take some time to meditate on this because mm. 
appropriation as we usually discuss it has changed particular I don't want to say has changed let me rephrase that the popular discussion of of appropriation has changed mm-hmm. because within the last maybe five years that phrase appropriation has been put on other black people from black people aka culture vulture <laughs> yeah right right and and I'm, I'm you know dame dash kind of popularized that yeah. term yeah and the irony of dame dash popularizing that term from funk master flex to mm-hmm. about a month to two months ago um source money who's one of my favorites oh yeah <laughs> for sure he ends a he ends a line in a verse of 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 um dang, it was a like 20 minute song with, with from 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 um cap mm, okay. and, and and source money's verse he ends his verse saying and ain't all culture vultures white <laughs> So that means yeah. he's strongly not even suggesting, but saying there are black culture vultures, meaning black folk appropriate black culture, mm-hmm. right? So now this is kind of a two direction question that I'm about mm-hmm. to ask you. Yeah. At what point, thinking of Jay Z mm-hmm. coming from the folk and now and I say this very respectfully mm-hmm. based on his successes being removed from the folk because of his successes. Yeah. At what point does that become appropriation? Whew. And on the flip side, and I think a, a this is like an extreme example, mm-hmm. Rachel Dolezal, <laughs> uh, right? When, when that first happened, it was a joke to me. Yeah. But as I continue to to investigate and 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 like scientifically and logically break this down, there's way more to that story than just a woman beating the system. Could yeah. could could you could you appropriate to the point where you believe you are that? Does this make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, yeah. Man, you come in with the hard hitting questions. Because <laughs> I mean, you know that that the the Jay Z right uh, situation, and you know, there's other folks, Puff, the Kanye, all a lot of folks. I mean, there's that class of you know black folks, right? But you know, the same thing could be you know uh, we could we could also talk about just you know folks who got their PhDs or whatever, and continue to study uh, Black hood culture, right? We can also question, hey, is that cultural appropriation? Is that that person a culture vulture too? Because they've risen so much in class. I mean, I don't know. That's that's, that's a complicated question. I I do think, I think that, I think a Black person can be a culture vulture. I think I would say that I would agree with Dame and others in that way. Um, oh well, Fle- Flex yeah. called Dame Dash. Oh, a Flex. Culture oh, Flex called. Oh, he called Dame Dash a culture vulture. Right, Dame Dash called Leah Cohen yeah. a f- culture vulture. Flex got on a radio and said, "You're a culture vulture," and then he was dropping bombs. It's funny. Wow. Oh, I'll send you that okay. I find it. okay, man. Nah, I'll call my man Dame a culture vulture. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah, I, I think I think it's possible, right? I think somebody, a black person, can be so so removed from the everyday experiences of most black people, right, and still yet decide to somehow profit off of those people. You know, I th- I think if we accept that a culture vulture is a thing, I think it could be applied to that type of black person. Yeah, sure. I, I think that's quite possible. I think it's complicated though, because that person is black and they might've come from those communities, right? And that may be a part of them. So it's hard to parse out where just, you know, authentic 
historical connections end and culture vulturing begins. You know, it's just okay. hard to parse that out with black folks. But um, I think it can happen for sure. Uh, Rachel, Rachel Dolezal, I mean, <laughs> so you're gonna get me in trouble. Right? Um, you know, That's not what I'm trying to a say. few a few years ago, though, uh, I got in trouble, right? Because I wrote a piece, an opinion piece for the Washington Post about Iggy Azalea. When hmm. she came out, you know, Iggy Azalea coming from Australia, adopting a black scent, you know, she was popping for a minute, right? And then fell off. But I was just writing it, telling people, hey, look, you know, don't worry about her. You know, she's not going to last. Let's give our attention to more, more pressing things, right? And of course, because I didn't say, hey, you know, because I didn't verbally just, you know, a dump on her. People thought I was supporting whatever she was doing, which I, I'm not. But so I'm saying that to say, hey, I've been in the fire before. Right, but right. Rachel Dolezal um, or people like that. I, 